child and it's a life and it's hard. Last year, this white center woman who is wheelchair dependent was raped by a man she did not know. And I like begged them not to let him out. Um, but they did. The man who raped her, Francisco Carranza Ramirez, served nine months in jail. Then just days after his release, Ramirez came after the victim again. I thought he was going to kill me. The um, way like he had my throat, it was just like I couldn't breathe, I couldn't talk. She is now in hiding in protective custody. Their system completely backfired and failed me. From the very beginning, the victim says the King County Prosecutor's Office failed her. They'll file the lower charges, or they file the charges lower so that they can get, they can convince or give incentive for ple people to plead guilty. The woman telling her Jamie Tompkins last night that she pleaded with the prosecutor's office to go after Ramirez to the fullest extent. It's not a justice system for victims, it's a justice system for defendants. And now with his release, she says the courts failed her again. Prosecutors recommended community supervision, but King County Superior Court Judge Nicole Gaines Phelps declined community supervision. Today, State Representative Dan Griffey says he's frustrated over the details of this case. It pisses me off, and we should all be pissed off. Griffey is passionate about reforming sexual assault laws in Washington. This story, he says, shows that more work needs to be done. A lot of times they plea cases out, but there's certain cases that I think um, have, uh, that are so detrimental to um, society. He wants to sponsor a bill that could change the process when it comes to the most violent sexual assault cases. It's getting to the point in time where the legislature is going to have to say no prosecutors you can't play, plead these cases down in certain circumstances there's no plea deals this lawmaker also wants to know why the courts did not alert law enforcement to escort ramirez to the border after ordering the native of mexico to go home according to the communications manager for the king county superior court it's just not procedure it failed on common sense issues common sense and I don't understand. And now this woman is afraid to even go outside with this predator out on the loose. I don't want him to hurt anyone else. Judge Nicole Gaines Phelps is not allowed to comment on a case outside of court, but we did obtain the audio of the court hearing from last week when she did release Ramirez without community custody or supervision. Ramirez's attorney is heard telling the judge that all of the logistics have been made for Ramirez to return to his native country of Mexico, that his ex-wife would be picking him up, and that he even had a flight out of the country. There was also a question on whether or not Ramirez could leave the U.S. if he was in community custody. Ultimately, Ultimately, the judge decided to let Ramirez leave and required that he send proof that he made it to Mexico. Take a listen to a portion of the hearing. This is just a very interesting circumstance because the defendant himself is asking to leave the country. So to the extent that he is making a request of the court um, to return to Mexico, that is the only reason why the court is even thinking of the issue of that depending on his citizenship, which I'm not asking about because I'm legally prohibited from doing so. So you heard it right there. The judge or prosecutors are not allowed to ask about citizenship status. So not much they can do as far as, you know, that question, why wasn't he escorted to the border? Because they can't ask that question. Now, we reached out to Dan Satterberg's office about the initial charges. They say they just responded. They say there was no negotiations in this case. There was no plea deal. So they deny that. But the victim still stands by her um, interview with you, Jamie, when she told you that they, she asked for charges to be higher than rape in the third degree. She wanted that to be uh, with aggravated factors so that way this guy gets more uh, right, jail more time, time. Yeah. because with the rape in the third degree, the maximum sentence range in that, if you don't have a criminal history, is a year in jail. And essentially, that is what he got. And with yeah. good time and everything, he got out with nine months served. Yeah. So this is just a very complicated, even the court system in that audio hearing calling Sounds this like a it. very exceptional and unique case. Do we know, have any idea of where he could possibly be? I mean, could, could he be in Mexico? Could he be in White Center? I mean, do, what's the latest there? Yeah, well, we... I don't think law enforcement believes that he's in Mexico because he never got on that flight, obviously, but he's a 35-year-old homeless man, right. no known address. Mm -hmm. I know that obviously the, the incident, the initial incident happened in White Center, so maybe he is in that area, but really, we really don't know, mm -hmm. so everyone needs to keep an eye out on him. He's a dangerous guy. He's still out there. Yeah. All right, All Hannah. Right, Hannah, thank you. Thank yeah. you.